Hi, welcome to our Design Teardown demo. My name is Eric Troutman, and I'm an instructor with the Viking Code School. Um, so what we're basically going to do today is a real quick walkthrough of the design elements of a website called dn.se, which is a news site. Um, our goals today really are just to demonstrate an approach for critiquing the design of a website and kind of give you the vocabulary to do so. Um, it's not really about being right or wrong on the specifics when you're doing something like this, when you're looking at a site. It's really more about just critically thinking about the sites you visit. Uh, it just takes a lot of practice and a lot of thought to kind of just develop that that sixth sense for for when things are working and and you know that that curiosity to really you know click through and 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 look at things visually in a way that you maybe hadn't thought of before. Um, and then you know our final goal is is also to kind of show you some of the best practices that we haven't really talked about necessarily in some of the lessons, uh, and they're not being done correctly on the DN site. Um, you're not expected to just know these things off the top of your head. Um, we just hope that you know hope. Maybe by listening to them and, and kind of absorbing them, you know, you'll you'll remember them for later when they might come in handy. So why did we choose this website? Uh, first of all, it's in Swedish, and you know, one of the reasons for doing that is because again, a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about are visually based, and so we don't really want you to get distracted by reading the news stories and things like that. So unless you speak Swedish, that shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, it's also a content-based site. So uh, you're really expected as a user to consume a lot of content and spend a lot of time with it. So you really hope that they're going to have a good design if that's, if that's essentially going to be the main user goal. Uh, and finally, it's actually a case study in bad UX and bad design. And uh, where in, during you know, the, the previous uh, the UX teardown, we, we were looking at a site that was a little bit better. Uh, in this case, you're definitely going to see some counterexamples. All right, so in terms of the questions that we're trying to address, uh, it's going to be very similar to the ones that you saw on the UX side, but a little bit more focused on the visual design. As with everything that we do, it really starts with the user and the user's goals. Uh, once we know those goals, then we want to kind of look at some of the design elements and see how do they support those goals. And so that means looking at the visual hierarchy of the page, uh, thinking about the font families, uh, you know, some of the spacing issues and the layouts, uh, and finally, you know, looking at the color as well, and finally looking at you know, just on a, on a larger sense, how could we actually improve, uh, you know, the, the visual hierarchy of the website itself and, and you know, look, look towards maybe some suggestions for them. All right, so let's dive right in. Um, in front of you right now, you can see the image of the site as I took a screenshot. Um, the site today isn't exactly like that anymore. Obviously, it's a new site. It changes all the time. <clears throat> um, I think the one we'll see today might be a little bit better, but this one in front of you right now, hopefully you can see how, how much of a problem it is, uh, you know, looking at the site that we're going we're gonna to see. But um, let's take a look at it live and just, just have a chance to, uh, you know, to get a look at it. So dn.se. All right, so here's the site. And just right, right immediately looking at you, I mean, obviously the page is in Swedish, but I, I hope I hope I hope you can immediately see some of the some of the issues that I've been having with this site. Um, frankly, that it's incredibly difficult to, to to figure out what to do. I mean, what is this? The, this thing across the top it's grabbing my attention. Well, it's an ad, of course. It has nothing to do with the news. I mean, the the news isn't even really above the fold in this case. I have to scroll down just to get the main headline, the the, the you know the major story that the the, the you know the Ukraine, uh, uh, you know the. This looks like an airliner crash or something, right? Um, so that's that's not great. But okay, so let's assume that I've, I've kind of found my way down. Cool, that looks like a, a, use, a good story for me. I'm going to scroll down. Well, geez, here we are again. We've got a whole bunch of ads. Um, and by the way, if you're doing this on your own, make sure your, your ad blocker is turned off. That's one of the reasons I'm in incognito browser in, in Chrome. Uh, because your ad blocker obviously will, will not show you these ads. And so you won't get the pleasure of, of, of you know, showing how or feeling how awful these ads really are. Um, but reading through the news story, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm really confused by this, this whole, the whole layout anyways. The news story is kind of jammed on the left here. Uh, it's, it's kind of packed together. It doesn't, it doesn't, things feel a little bit tight. Um, and it, so I guess that, that kind of gives you an idea of this, of the site. You know, you keep scrolling down and it just goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, so that that's the basic layout, and then there's a, there's a whole bunch of different things across the top here you can navigate to. Um, not, not terribly rocket science, and frankly, not that different from a lot of news sites either. So we'll uh, we'll head back to the home page and, uh, and and check out what we're looking at. So um, backing up a little bit, let's think about who the user is and what their goals are. Um, obviously, the site's in Swedish, so the user's probably going to be Swedish and someone who's curious about the news. I don't know exactly what demographic that would represent. 
you know, they're using the internet, so they're probably not terribly old. I think that in general, people who consume news like that, um, you know, tend not to be that young. So uh, it seems kind of amorphous. Uh, but in terms of their criti critical goal, I think it's pretty obviously that they, they, they come to the site to read the news. Um, presumably, they come to read the top news as well. Um, obviously, the, there is some hierarchy to news, and there are things that are more interesting than others, and, and I want the most interesting stuff first. Uh, my secondary goal, then, would be from that point to sort of explore into other interesting news, uh, maybe things that apply a little bit more to me in some of the subsections that I'm most interested in, like, for instance, the economy or business or, or lifestyles, things like that. Um, so let's let's take a look at the visual hierarchy here, and, and this is a good exercise. You, you can see I've, I've blurred out the whole page. And that sort of represents like blurring of your eyes. And it says like, okay, so if I'm, if I'm looking at this site, what am I supposed to do? Like, wh where is my eye going? Like, my goal is to read the news. Where is the news? I have absolutely no idea. I just, I just can't. So th this is what happens when my eye looks at the site. Where's the headline? Where's the news? All right, I'm looking at an image. I'm looking at another image, shooting over to, to the name of the site. And then there's another image. Oh, wait, okay, I finally found the news. It's, it's hiding down there, way down in the lower left-hand corner. That is an awful, awful thing. I mean, the images distract. This whole three-column, this multiple-column grid thing, uh, it, it, it just, it, like, again, it, it's, you're putting the, the, the lead, the main headline, down on the lower left-hand corner, barely above the fold. It's clear that, I mean, this is an ad-driven site, so they're trying to draw your attention to all these ads because they make money on clicks. But when you try to grab someone's attention on everything, you get none of it. You have to have a path. You have to have something. Otherwise, the, re the reader's just going to look and, and ping pong around like this. And frankly, I don't even want to. I don't even want to read this site. I, don't, I just hate it. But okay, so let's let, let's look a little bit more specifically at some of the uh, some of the other elements. In this case, the font families. So, if you look at the uh, if you use the what font add-in, which uh, actually I can't, I can't use right now because I'm in an in incognito browser. Um, but you can see it over here. Uh, basically, you, you know, you, you click on, you click on, whoops, you, you click on a font, and it'll take you up. It'll, it'll kind of, paint, it'll show you what that font actually is. And so, if you click around the site here, I'm um, just click. I'm um, in a news story. I've clicked around. Most of the font is Arial, so all the body stuff is Arial, which is a font that you're all probably familiar with because it's been around forever. Uh, the headlines they've actually used a specific font called Publico Headline Web Black. Um, it's, it's, you know. It's not a standard font, and they're actually, if, if you look on the network tab, if you pull up the network tab in your developer tools while you're loading the site, you can actually go, you can see, maybe it might be too small here on, on the screenshot, but you can actually see uh, that that font is being loaded from the fonts folder, so that means that the website itself is serving the font, so they're not getting it, for instance, from Google or from Adobe, like through, through a content delivery network. They're actually, th this website's servers are sending up the font. So that, that's something, that's an implementation note, but it's kind of interesting to note anyways, because it does affect usability, because if it's served from a slow server, the, the page can freeze while the font is loading, and then it'll finally start showing up. Um, another, another thing to note, again, about Arial, is that Arial's an interesting choice, because it's always going to be fast, because browsers always have Arial. It's, it's a standard font. It's not a web font, but it's not really that trendy, and if you look into the typography, over here on the right, you can see I've just I've just taken a screenshot of a sample story. Uh, just diving quickly into the body, it, it feels a little bit cramped. I mean, there's so many letters just right next to each other. There's not a lot of spacing. I'm not sure that Arial was necessarily the right font for for you know a, a high readability website. Um, but zooming back out, if we look at size and weight, at the very least, they did get the headline uh, bolded. That's good. You know, you you, you kind of scroll, you look down the page, and and and. You know, the sizing and the bolding kind of decreases as you go down. I'm not sure I like that the quote is on the exact same level as the headline. I'd like to see the quote either less bold or, or you know, lighter color or something like that. <clears throat> so it actually differentiates itself as a quote. I'm not sure if understanding the language would, would make that, you know, a little bit easier to parse the quote away from the, the leader here, but um, th that is one thing that I noticed. Um, in terms of Color, like uh, spacing, like I said, the letters, it feels a little bit cramped. I think, I think it needs to breathe a little bit. Um, there's also the fact that uh, typography on the web, um, I, I think they're a little bit too small in terms of font size. Uh, you know, in print media typography, uh, the font sizes are usually smaller. It's usually maybe like a 12 or 14 point font. Uh, when you go on the web, you have to have larger fonts because people sit further away from the screen. And so a typical web font would be more in the 14, 16, or even 20 point uh, uh, pixel. Uh, range. So 
I would like to see that to be a little bit bigger. Maybe it's because my eyes are failing. But I think it's also a function of them jamming the content into these little tiny columns like we were talking about. Uh, in terms of the color, uh, the, their font, everything is black on white, which um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to read pure black on, on pure white. Uh, you know, your eye fatigues a little bit more. And uh, also in terms of the visual hierarchy, um, yeah, they have, they're using bold to differentiate things going down the page, but if your body text is also just a little bit lighter, like not quite jet black, maybe instead of, um, in, in, in hex instead of a 000, it would be a 333, uh, something like that. Um, that'll, that'll, that also kind of helps the user just seamlessly flow into the content. Um, but actually, one, one last note um, on, on, on the typography is you can't go too crazy on lightening up your body because older readers and people with bad eyesight will have more trouble reading it if it's too light. Okay, so to kind of finish things up here, let's think about suggestions. I mean, yes, it's a total mess. I mean, we could do a, a whole UX case study too on, on why, you can't, why you just can't navigate the site well. The home page is a mess. Ad, everything is, is focused on ads, but there's too many ads, so you don't know where to look. You definitely need to de-emphasize the ads or provide some very coherent path through them. I, I, I can't even imagine that their click rates are going to be that high if they just keep jamming ads on there like that. It's a classic case of sort of sacrificing the quality of your product to deliver ads so that you can monetize your product. <clears throat> um, and also, the, one, one thing in, in the case study that we looked at, just scrolling back up here, the, this image on the top, is, it's, it's an ad. And, and you saw that when we looked at the site. Your, your headline image should not be an ad. It should be, it should be for, at the very least, for that story. Because again, you have to be able, in the hierarchy, you have to be able to find the story. Because that's your goal. You go to the website to read the story, not to read a whole bunch of ads. All right. Um, navigation elements, are there's just so many of them. They're all over the place. Uh, and they're all on the same hier hierarchical level. Um, so I, I, think, I think, again, looking at the site, um, let me see. here's a screenshot. Everything up here, I think this whole first half of the page, even ignoring all the problems with the ads and the graphics, could, could I think they could sort of, I think they could change the the weighting of all these things, the visual weighting of all these things by you know maybe making them lighter colors, um, using lighter graphics, using less graphics because again graphics are the number one attention grabber. Uh, it, it just there's too much going on. There's too many things to draw your eye. Uh, right, and yeah, the, the, that three-column grid was just awkward, um, having, having the, the story jammed over on the left and then having some sort of link column down the middle and then a whole bunch of uh, other links out on the right and three columns. I, I think you need to, at the very most, stick with a two-column and, uh, and try to or center the text within the three columns so that there's a sidebar on the left and a sidebar on the right, but the text is in the middle. Um, Finally, I think they should tweak the typography and the spacing to breathe a little bit more and, and improve the readability. It feels a little bit jammed up. Uh, consider using a different body font and uh, make it a dark gray instead of instead of pure black with a larger size. Uh, so we, we we've gone <laughs> we've gone through a whole lot of problems with this site. It, it's definitely good to, to end on a good note. Let's take a look at the New York Times. The New York Times has a website that I I absolutely love. I think they've done an incredibly good job. Of, of making a very usable and very consumable site. Uh, so th this is a, a specific story from the New York Times website. I scrolled down a little bit, but the, the, very, the top is, is the image. It's focused completely on the text in the middle. The body is centered. Uh, it's very clean. They're using a, a serif font. Um, you know, it's, it's not pure black. It's sort of a, a, a dark gray. And the spacing looks great. The, the line length looks great. You know, it's you can tell it's just built for readability on the web. They've got a little bit of social stuff on the left to distract you. They've got a, uh, a navigation on the right to send you over, but your eye is definitely flowing from the image down the page. And, and the nav bar on the top too, you can see it's just white. It's just very unobtrusive and very clean. Now, obviously, it, the New York Times is, is using a different revenue model than, than DN. Um, it's subscription-based and it's not ad-based. And I think you can immediately tell <laughs> that the difference is in the product. I mean, your revenue model will affect your product. <laughs> Obviously, the New York Times, they have a great product and that's because they don't have to sacrifice their product to make click revenue. Ads screw everything up. Just, <laughs> just remember that if you remember nothing. Um, so anyways, I, I hope that was a useful look at, at some of the design elements on, 
on uh, a couple of websites, the DN site mostly, and then just a quick peek at the New York Times here. Uh, I, I hope you've had a, uh, you know, I hope you've learned some stuff and I hope you've kind of got that eye ready to, to go out and tackle the web. So now it's your turn. Uh, go out there, look at sites, kind of, you know, blur your eyes, find the hierarchy, think about fonts, think about colors, and, and just see what works, what, what, you know, what, what helps you achieve your goal as a user on the site. Thanks a lot.